A common misconception about me being a knife designer who works a lot with Chinese OEMs is that I almost exclusively like overseas knives. The truth couldn't be further away from this. Uh, in that I actually have a pretty sizable collection of American-made knives. Uh, I would almost argue that the number of American-made knives almost equals the number of knives that I have made by overseas manufacturers. And this may surprise a lot of you. The largest portion of my collection have been Emerson's, of course, but I'm always looking for another really impressive American manufacturer to kind of enter the collection. And that happened with this American Blade Works Model 1. This particular model is done in uh, green micarta, I had to remember, <laughs> and 20 CV. I don't know if this will show up, but look at those grind lines on the blade. Such a subtle but really, really cool feature. This is a liner lock running on bearings, and he did one of the smartest things, I feel, on a knife like this. Put a titanium pocket clip on there. The ergonomics of this thing are just spot on, super comfortable in hand, a good weight where it feels it's light, you know, compared to a lot of things, but it doesn't feel delicate and it's not something that disappears in my pocket to the point where I have to keep checking my pocket to see if my knife is still there. It really hits the balance of all good things, in my opinion. Oh, and I forgot. Full length, or not full length, but solid titanium backspacer, which is one of my, one of my favorite details, actually. And so I was actually kind of left with a bit of a conundrum because I, I wanted to understand why... In such a short time, this became one of my absolute favorite knives. And I was sitting with my dad, and I was kind of staring at the knife, and I was trying to understand it, trying to figure out what endeared this thing to me so much. I, I was kind of explaining to him my conundrum and, and why I appreciate it, but also what draws me to, for example... Emerson's, like this EX100 here. This is one of my absolute favorite knives, and it's one of my uh, most frequently carried knives, actually, along with uh, this guy, the Mini A100, absolute beast in a small package, and the ZT, 0640, which I consider to be one of the greatest knife designs ever made. And it's really interesting. <laughs> My dad actually kind of summed it up really uh, simply. He was just like, it's because they're very utilitarian. All of these knives are very utilitarian. And it dawned on me, he's right, as he so often is, but it, it kind of goes a little deeper than that. Each one of these designs is made in a sort of no frill sort of way. If you look at the American Blade Works, I mean, the scales are pretty squared off, straight up, you know. It has a liner lock, they're nested liners, but that kind of squaring off is not too dissimilar from, say, my Emerson's. It's just kind of slab cut, maybe with a, a kind of subtle chamfer, but really nothing too dramatic, right? If we were to look at my Kaimano in comparison, you can see in my design language, I tend to use these really big dramatic chamfers, big dramatic like kind of angle changes and stuff like that. And these guys tend to be much more simplistic in their shapes. 
And that reminded me of this uh, theory that came out a long time ago called the periodic table of form. So in the design world, there's different resources and one of them was a website. I don't know if they're still really active, but it was a design website called Core 77. And they published this article about what's called the periodic table of form. And I'm gonna pop up on the screen as I talk about this. The, within this article, they argued that there were essentially three fundamental design languages, like three original uh, design languages, okay? So bear with me as I get into this. First, there is what's called positional. The easiest way I can describe this is facets. Think uh, F-117, uh, yeah, F-117 stealth jet. Think uh, crystals, think palm fronds, very uh, angular kind of shapes that are meeting each other in these kind of like sharp interconnections, okay? And they, they really don't have any soft transitions between them. This is a, a design language from nature that almost suggests like danger and kind of um, uh, 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 a sense of, of, yeah, danger, I think is really the best way of explaining it. One of the other form languages that we see in nature is what's called curvature. Curvature is stuff like you will see in my knives, actually. This tends to be my personal preferred design language, where this, the blade, a Tonto blade, would be kind of positional design language. My handles are curvature. It's not just a circle with a radius, circle with a radius, and kind of uh, fillets meeting in between. You'll see a thinner section, you know, kind of accelerating and going into another section. Um, one way I can best describe this is think of uh, muscles, muscle groups, right? Like you'll see a bulge on one side and then a, a broader curve on the other. You'll see, you know, uh, um, kind of uh, uh, even with the animals, you, you'll see uh, a bunched up section counteracted by a, a longer, leaner section. Uh, and we, it, it, those of us who uh, design supercars, not me, because obviously, uh, but th they use this design language a lot, actually. And uh, you'll see it a lot in Ferraris, especially like classic Ferraris. Uh, and this suggests like power and elegance and sort of that's a uh, kind of inference. Uh, and it's, it's what we see in nature as kind of being the most elegant side of things. Where we get into what appeals with these knives, and particularly coming back around full circle to the American Blade Works Model 1, uh, we get into what's called tangential uh, design language. And this comes from really like man-made stuff. Man-made stuff is predominantly tangential. Think about your uh, Makita, DeWalt, uh, Milwaukee drills, right? They're not really designed with angular faceted shapes. They're not really designed with kind of super car-ish kind of features. They tend to be kind of circular, rectangular with perfect radiuses, kind of like this, right? Yes, you have an oval, so there is a bit of like an acceleration, uh, aesthetically speaking, but again, this is a perfect circle, right? This is a perfect circle. You have just even the, the uh, flipper tap is a perfect circle with a radius, a perfect radius, right? And a lot of this is derivative from or, or derived from our design and manufacturing tools, be it uh, CAD, CNC machining, and stuff like that. It is a signature human aesthetic. It really is. And 
for us in in a sort of design language kind of way this speaks of utility functionality efficiency and practicality and then that's when it dawned on me right like american made knives probably do this better than any other market or any other country any other manufacturers in the world we do this concept of tangential design better than anybody else uh, we really have mastered this sort of aesthetic of utility and functionality and i think that's what really appeals to me about a lot of my american-made knives there's really very little that that mimics this sort of design language even if you think about for example a paramilitary 2 right the handles are exceedingly utilitarian functional efficient you know and nobody else does this i think as well as we do here in america and for me one of the penultimate designs that really embodies that is this model one i have found this to be one of the most satisfying knife designs that i've had in a long time and it does everything that i would want from an edc knife really really well you've got a good blade shape there is nothing within the blade path that impedes sort of cutting progress I know people get all crazy about multiple deployment methods, but the flipper works so damn well here. It's amazing. Uh, the inclusion of the titanium pocket clip is phenomenal because you get something that's incredibly low profile and in the hand just disappears. I have no sensation that there is a pocket clip in my hand. Uh, maybe it's because I have big mitts, but it really just kind of disappears. You've got a really, really well done drop point blade, but it has kind of a longer flat section, which I really appreciate. And the center point of where the tip is almost aligns with the center point of the handle. So you really get this sort of sensation that if you're trying to pierce, which is important to me, uh, I know exactly where the blade is going relative to the position of my hand. All of these things are really well thought out. And if you remember, one of the things that I mentioned in the very beginning was this backspacer. And this is one of the things that I value so incredibly in this knife. And I do so from a designer and somebody who deals with manufactured sort of products a lot. One of the things that I have absolutely noticed is that the sensation of quality goes up exponentially when you have a backspacer like this. Also, when you're dealing with a liner lock uh, with micarta scales, the liners are not particularly, how shall I say, excellent at preventing any sort of warping of the scales you could use barrel spacers like the uh, emerson's do however it's still not as good as having a big chunk of metal that sits in there that actually can't be torqued and it's one of the things that i noticed with my paramilitary too when I used to rock it with uh, uh, micarta scales, the micarta could warp depending on the humidity, temperature, etc. The second I put in a backspacer, all of that went away, and my sensation of, of kind of robustness and sort of uh, reliability of the strength of the handle went up infinitely. And the American Blade Works does that from the get-go. It's not something that you have to add or spend any more money on. So really, for me, this why this became one of my instantaneous favorites all of a sudden started to make sense. This thing is really, really well thought out. 
excellent blade, perfect heat treat, handmade in America. Handmade. This is a this is a handmade knife. That's the crazy part. I didn't even mention that until now in the video. But this is hand freaking made. And it's two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. I can't tell you a better deal than that right now. Now, as far as criticisms are concerned, some people may be upset about this. If you look, the tip of the blade is really, really far back by modern standards from the tail of the handle here. Um, let me make sure that that focus, there you go. You can see that fairly clearly here. And at first, admittedly, it, it did bother me. It's like, wait a second, I could have gotten a few extra tenths of an inch of blade there. But in practice, it doesn't bother me. It serves a purpose for giving a proper two screw mount to the pocket clip. The pocket clip actually screws directly into that. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, right? So he is relying on screwing into the back spacer rather than simply just screwing into the liner, which is a much more robust approach to constructing the knife. And in practicality and in use, I have never found myself wanting for more blade length than I already have. Um, really, for an EDC knife, I would argue this thing is damn near perfect. And really, I struggle to find any like serious shortcomings with this thing. Um, or any shortcomings in general. So if you guys haven't, give American Blade Works a shot, man. Like this is a no nonsense, no frills, no muss, no fuss, American tool. You know, American made, handmade, just symbol of efficiency, a symbol of functionality, purpose, practicality all in one really, really great package. And man, this thing came screaming sharp and I, I, I've been using the heck out of it and I haven't even needed to strop it yet. So give this one a shot. This is definitely going to not leave my EDC rotation anytime soon.